Welcome back to Reading Bear. Today, we will take a look at some new Mauritius compliance stories. And if you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comments. Let's go! The first story is titled Pound of Wings. Okay, you got it. I worked as a cook at a chain restaurant that had a wing night where you could get a pound of wings at a discounted price. We didn't actually weigh the wings, our specs said 8 wings to a pound. 4 drums and 4 flats. One night a table comes in and everyone orders a pound of wings. A little while after the wings go out, the server comes back a little flustered and explains there has been a complaint. Apparently, one of the guys at the table complained that it was obvious that he didn't get a pound, because it would be a huge coincidence if everyone's pounds led to the same number of wings on each plate. He insisted that the server go and weigh these already discounted wings to make sure he was getting what he paid for. So we waited it. Sure enough it was not a pound. It was a pound and a half. We tell the server to bring it out and tell him he's getting more than a pound. She says, duck no. He paid for a pound, he's going to get what he paid for, and threw two of his wings in the garbage and re-weighted the food. Still over. Throws another one out. Bang on one pound of wings. So she brings back out his five wings and calmly tells the gentleman, here are your wings sir. You were right, there was more than a pound there. So we threw the other ones out. Good catch. When they ordered a second round, he didn't complain that everyone got eight wings to a pound. The next story is titled, Check Your Employee Handbook. It's right there. This story happened about 14 years ago when I worked for a now defunct electrical store in the UK, whose name I won't mention but it rhymed with vomit. At the time, I was a teenager and reliant on public transport to get to work. There was only one bus an hour to this out of town retail park and it was scheduled to arrive at 8.55 which theoretically would give me enough time to walk from the bus stop to the store ready to start my shift at 9am. However, on many occasions the bus was late due to traffic so I'd sometimes arrive at work at 9.05 which wasn't a problem because the store was usually quiet until 11am but the manager accepted that I would make up any of this time at the end of my shift. So this went on for about a year with no problems until a new deputy manager was brought in from another store. She was a clock watcher and wanted me to be there at 9am every day and wasn't accepting any excuses for buses being late or anything else. I asked her if I could simply change my shift from 9 o'clock to 1700 to 910 to 1710 which I thought was reasonable. She refused completely and told me, you have to be on time for your shift. Check your employee handbook, it's right there. I did check my employee handbook and it did state exactly what she said, but on the same page it said that every employee working a shift longer than 6 hours is entitled to a 60 minute uninterrupted lunch break. Uninterrupted is the key word here. Later that day, I was about halfway though my lunch break in the staff room when she came in and said that the shop floor was busy, there's not enough sales people out there and there's a customer waiting to buy a plasma TV. Nobody volunteered so she specifically picked me and told me to go and serve the customer and then come back to continue my lunch break. This wasn't uncommon and it wasn't really a problem usually. I served the customer, processed the sale and then went back to the staff room to continue my break. 50 minutes later, she comes back to the staff room with a face like thunder asking why I'm still on my lunch break. You should have been back out on the shop floor 20 minutes ago. Why are you still in here? I calmly replied that I still have 10 minutes left on my 60 minute uninterrupted lunch break. I explained that by taking me off lunch 30 minutes early, that wasn't an uninterrupted lunch break before I smiled and told her, check the employee handbook, it's right there. She was furious. She went to the store manager and said I'd taken an extra long lunch break but when he came in to speak to me I explained to him that my break was interrupted by the deputy manager. She protested and said that just because I have to spend a few minutes with a customer doesn't mean I'm entitled to an extra 30 minute break. The store manager wasn't happy with the situation but agreed that I was entitled to my uninterrupted break as per company policy. By now it was time for me to go back out on the shop floor so I put my lunchbox back in my locker and left. She didn't talk to me for the rest of the day, but she didn't ask any of us to serve customers during our lunch breaks ever again either. The next story is titled, My gay friend explains to my other friends why he doesn't like them. 
my friend, let's call him Nick recently came out to our friend group. All of us were happy he found himself and all the good ally stuff. But like even though they were supportive three of our mutual friends, let's call them friend one to three for simplicity, started acting weird around him. We all changed in locker rooms together since middle school. And I'm not trying to make it weird but I'm 100% certain we've all seen each other's privates. But the second my friend came out they all got weird and was like he was checking them out and they were uncomfortable. Nick tried to explain he had a boyfriend but still left the room out of respect. I thought they were overreacting but it's not my place to think for someone else. Anyway yesterday I'm in a group chat with all my friends and friend one makes a comment about he's so hot he'd turn straight guys gay. Nick didn't respond to that comment and friend one asked him if he was hot enough that Nick wanted him. I could tell Nick was uncomfortable but they kept pushing it even after I tried to change the conversation. Friend 3 asked Nick out of the three of them who would he most likely duck. Nick is a perfectionist and tbh sometimes a dick because he's brutally honest. Only recently has he realized being honest all the time isn't always that nice. Nick explains to them he really doesn't want to hurt their feelings and says drop it. But they won't let it go and said they want to be raided by him. They were being so annoying two other friends left the GC. But not me I'm nosy af because I knew what was coming. So Nick is like duck it since you wanna know so badly let me tell you exactly why none of you are ever on my radar. Nick explains to friend one that he isn't attractive since he doesn't know how to take showers right and always smells like body odor mixed with body spray. He also goes into how his personality is literally playing sports and video games and besides those he doesn't have any other talents or hobbies. Friend one can never keep a GF for longer than a few weeks since he has commitment issues and can't handle being rejected. Nick said that friend 2 isn't attractive because his head is disproportionate to the rest of his body. Friend 2 is really muscular but his head is kinda small. He also said that just because friend 2 is ripped he thinks he doesn't have to put effort into anything else like brushing his teeth. And friend 2 just always smells like sweaty pubes because he knows he doesn't wash down under just rinses its and expects it to be clean. Finally Nick said friend 1 isn't attractive because he has a forehead that's so big that if he was nearby the Malaysian flight 370 could have landed safely. And Nick was certain if he shaves his eyebrows he would find Twizzlers hidden inside. After Nick finished they were just silent. Friend 1 tried to play it off but I know it hit a nerve. Nick explained to them that he thinks they're all cute in their own way but just not to him. He explained that just since he's gay now means he's staring at their dicks when we change together. I think they got it now. Now they're back to normal around Nick and apologized. But I for one didn't stop laughing for hours. But hey they asked lol. The next story is titled, you don't have the parts required but insist I come to site? Okay. I work as a field service engineer. I go to a variety of sites to do specialized work on a variety of different equipment. I have a customer that requires a one hour flight to get to and I usually go there once every two months. They had a bunch of big staff changes on site over the last few years and that made the site more and more awkward to deal with. They have their analyzer that I service for them, it requires chemical reagents to take measurements. They report to me that they are having issues with the analyzer and want me on site ASAP. I ask a few questions to try and see what's going on and they very grudgingly give answers, too much effort for the manager to bother looking into it or to allow the lowly operator to contact me directly. From what little information I do get I'm thinking that they've run out of reagents, it's never happened before on this site because the operator knew what he was doing, kept a close eye on reagent levels, he checked them once a week, changed them when needed and got replacements ordered when needed too. These aren't things that you can bulk buy for the year and forget about, the shelf life isn't great in them and a bottle of reagent could last from 3 months to 18 months, depending on the reagent. The analyzer required 10 separate reagents. So there's a little bit of effort required to manage the reagents properly and keep every going with the analyzer. Before this issue the operator was allowed to order stuff themselves, now everything needed to be approved by big boss manager guy who had a very high opinion of himself. And he didn't think it necessary to order replacement reagents when the operator said they were needed. 
I tell him that the issue looks like the analyzer is out of reagents and I'm pretty sure they don't have any spare. We had quoted them after my previous service for reagents. The operator asked me to, and we hadn't received an order for them yet, so I know they weren't ordered, so there's no point in me going to site unless they have those. Manager guy insists that I come over, emailing me with a bunch of high up staff on site CCED. I reply with a date to travel over, asking if the date is okay and restating my concerns about their lack of reagents and that they have several weeks of lead time. I get to site a couple of days later. I do an inspection on the analyzer. A bunch of the reagent bottles are empty. Everything else looks fine. Nothing I can do. One or two people are getting a bit grumpy with me that their analyzer isn't working. I restate everything about the reagents. Why hadn't this happened before? Well your operator was allowed to get stuff ordered himself and now he's not, someone never signed off on that a few weeks ago. Guess I'll see you in a few weeks for the next service visit after the new reagents arrive, and he's an invoice for a couple thousand euro for this emergency visit that you insisted on having. The next story is titled, an old woman tried to con me into getting a deal, I decided to con her right back. My dad owns and operates a little locksmith service in a parking lot and I used to work for him once a week. It was amazing because unlike my corporate type job, I didn't have to worry about people going over my head to the manager. One day this old woman comes and asks to have some keys cut. I told her the total would be $7, to which she replied that she only had $5, my dad told me that I can give people benefit of the doubt when I wanted, and I'd rather make the 5 than nothing so I cut her keys and when it was time to pay she handed me a $10 bill. Obviously this woman had lied to save a couple bucks. So without hesitation I took the 10, thanked her, and went to the back without giving her change. She angrily asked me back and I told her that she said she only had a 5 on her, she paid with one bill so it must have been a 5, right? There's no way this nice old lady would lie to me. So I went to the back again. This time she called for me again shouting absolutely mad that I had taken her $10 bill. I kept playing dumb until she said the words, I lied, I'm sorry, I know better. When she finally did I gave her the $3 change and sent her away. The next story is titled, Kid wants me to buy alcohol for him. I refuse. He says come on take the money. Okay so this happened over 20 years ago when I was in my early 20s. I worked at a convenience store. Our store had a small room built on the outside where we placed cans and bottles into big bags to return to the companies who distributed beer or soda. Oregon gave a refund of 5 cents each, then but now it's 10 anyway one day at the end of my swing shift. It was about 10 or 10.30 pm, I believe it was my Friday, and so I wouldn't be back in at least two days. I was in the bottle room, sorting bottles I took on my shift. I hear a, hey. I look up it's a regular we got in there. A 12 year old kid, edit I am putting in an edit because it was approximation. He was just a regular, didn't know much else about him. He says, hey Joe, could you buy me some beer for me and my friends? I was surprised. What? Nah man, I'm not risking my job for that. Kid says, come on man, it's be easy for you. And I'd owe you one. I told the kid no again, and said, I'm not risking my job, not risking the fine, up to 5k, and I have no money. Kid says, here take the 20 inches and holds up a $20 bill. Nah man I'm not buying beer, dude. I repeat myself. This back and forth has been going on for 5 to 10 minutes and I'm getting irritated. I tell him no again. Again he says, come on take the money. I look at him and take the 20. Kid says cool, I'll wait behind the store. I don't say anything as he leaves the room. I leave it and lock the door. I walk in and look at my co-worker. I tell him the kid tried to get me to buy him beer. And when I told him no he kept insisting I take the $20. I told him I took it and it's a an annoyance tax. I told him have a good night and left. About a week or so later the kid is in the store. He's looking at candy. He waits until no one is there and comes to the counter. Where is my money? He asks. I look at him, what money? My 20 bucks. For the beer you were supposed to buy. He says. I told you I wouldn't buy you beer. And after that you insisted I take a $20 bill, I say. He gets all red in the face, you better give me my money back or else. I lean in towards him. Or else what? 
You gonna call a cop? The kid looked surprised, then he walked out defeated. Never came back in when I was working. The next story is titled, I thought you wanted a French newspaper. In my senior year of high school we chat a teacher take over our app history class, the teacher, E, was fresh out of college and our little class gave her hell. Looking back on it now, I realize we were all extra with her, but sometimes she was just asking for us to be smart asses. One of our assignments was to create a newspaper from Paris during the French Revolution. It was supposed to be pretty simple but I'm extra and so I made my plan. I wrote out the article about the revolution, googled what the weather was like on a specific day, a few obituaries, the works. Then I went to my French teacher and she helped me translate everything for my newspaper into French. I found a great template and after some hours on the computer, ta-da. A very realistic French newspaper was made. The day it was due, we all stacked out newspapers on a back table and E started to flip through them. In the middle of class, she calls me out. E, hey op, I can't read your newspaper. Me, unless you read French, I'd be surprised if you could. E, how am I supposed to grade this if it isn't in English? This is a problem. Me, I thought the assignment was to make a newspaper from Paris. E, it was, you haven't followed directions. Me, well I doubt a Parisian newspaper would be published in English. You wanted it to be historically accurate, D-I-D-N-T-U. E, fuming because this is not the first time I've done something like this I don't believe you, this isn't real French. Me, okay, go ask French teacher. She's the one who helped me translate it. E, fine, I'm calling your mum, my mum is a teacher too. Me, okay, go for it. E, warily picks up phone and calls my mom's school op turned in a project in French. Mum, the newspaper project? E, yes. Mum, why would a Parisian newspaper be in English? E, hangs up on my mum looks at me defeated op, did you make a copy in English? Me, of course. All you had to do was ask. She started adding to all rubrics for projects that everything must be in English. I wish I could say she backed off, but it was a year full of MC and we all gave her hell. The next story is titled, Don't Call Me Ma'am. Okay sir. Bit of a background, I had your standard terrifying grandma whose fear of reprisal instilled in me a rigid adherence to manners. I'll always say, pardon, instead of, what, or, ha, and I always address people I don't know by gender respecting honorifics. Men are always sir and woman I don't know a ma'am. I was raised believing these are signs of respect to people you aren't familiar with. Apparently that's no longer the case and a lot of women, Karens take being called, ma'am, as utterly insulting. A lady came in to ask for help with our photo kiosks. This is a tertiary service our company offered and it was supposed to be entirely customer operated. This lady comes in and is told the machine is self-serve and immediately began to scream at us telling us it's our job to do it for her, we do nothing else, while I was serving another couple, and we were good for nothing. Trying to de-escalate the situation I asked the couple I'm serving to wait and go over to see if I could help. What she wanted to do could not actually be done by our machines and I explained that to her. Don't give me that, I've had it done here before. Can you get someone who actually knows what they're doing to help me? Ma'am I do know how to work these machines, and what you're asking can't be done. Her face immediately filled with hatred and she said in a cutting voice, Don't you dare call me, ma'am, I'm not a, ma'am. Okay sir, I'm sorry. I said without really thinking. If I though she was angry before nothing compared to the torrent of hatred that exploded when I called her sir. She began screaming at me that she was an important customer to the store, I was the worst person she had ever encountered, she would be calling her friends in our head office to get me fired by the end of the day, and all the other things you come to expect from your middle-aged white woman who has been denied her idealized service of us bending over backwards for her. She was telling so loud the store manager came out cause she was worried. Interrupting the lady's diatribe she asked what I had happened. You associates called me, sir, when I asked him not to call me ma'am. The dumbfounded look on my manager's face was priceless. I'm sorry, but what do you want him to call you? At this point I left and the customer started screaming at my manager about how we were all going to lose our jobs. I went back to the couple I was helping, apologized and resumed helping them. Eventually the lady stormed out and my manager called me to her office. I walk in and my manager is sitting with her head down massaging her temples. I come in and she can only say, I hate people. 
The next story is titled, You Want Me To Stay? Okay. So I am currently 7 months into my new job, mainly shipping orders online. My hours have been constant up until a month ago, 5 days a week from 10 until 7. A few weeks ago they changed my hours, due to turnovers and new staff, I have become part of the veterans, the old guard, whatever you call it. One of the staff who left was on the morning shift so they asked me to start earlier, from 6 to 3. No problem, like the better hours. Cue someone who we will call Kurt. Kurt is the evening, weekend supervisor but isn't around my department that much. I didn't interact with him nor him me. But for some reason this weekend he noticed me leaving at the end of my shift. Kurt apparently hadn't heard of my shift change for months, or just straight up forgot about my hour change. But Saturday, as I was leaving and talking with a co-worker, he came out of the door by the one exit screaming like a male banshee. Kurt, FC, me. Where are you going? Me, I'm going home. I'm. Kurt, you are staying until the end of your shift. Me, but I'm done for the day. Kurt, you are not done until 7, I know that for a fact. Me, comprehension of what's happening, hey I started working. Kurt, I don't give a crap about what you started working on, get it finished first when you go back into the warehouse. Me, inner malicious compliance gears set to go, okay. So I put my stuff back in my locker and return to the warehouse. I look at the online orders, oh one popped up a minute ago. I should get at it. Shucks, none in warehouse, better find it on the floor. Oh, it's locked up, better go back and get the keys. Okay got keys, oops, wrong set. Needless to say that I did little for those hours. Busy enough to look busy but did what I could to fill the time. Today I went to my supervisor and mentioned that I will be adding 4 hours of overtime to my paycheck. When asked, I told her that Kurt asked me to stay until 7. Later on, my manager came over and apologized to me. He told me that Kurt was brought in and was asked why he kept me later than was necessary. And they had to patently explain the change of hours. Kurt tried to say I volunteered to stay but it didn't hold water. Then said that I talked back. No, co-worker vouched for me. Then his Hail Mary throw, I didn't tell him of the schedule change. Co-worker once again vouched that I tried to tell him but he overruled and yelled over me. Now I have some extra pay coming my way. And Kurt has been instructed to look at the schedule immediately when it's put up. The next story is titled, The Bowl's Not Full, You Say? At the restaurant where I work, we serve soup and chili, among other lunch items. The town the restaurant is located has a lot of older people, some of whom have grown more entitled with age. I'm serving one of said older people some chili, which I've put a lid on, because it's obviously dangerous to carry around hot chili without a lid. I didn't know that she was eating in before the pandemic, which made what happened slightly less malicious. She opens the chili right in front of me and complains that it's not completely full. I attempted to explain to her that the soup bowls are meant to be filled a half inch from the top to avoid spilling, and there's a barely noticeable indentation indicating this, but she kept interrupting me, demanding that she get a full bowl of chili. When I come back with her bowl, it's full alright, heaped over the top of the bowl, where you can't possibly put on the lid without making a huge mess, and even carrying it to a table would be risky if you couldn't keep it steady. She looks up at me as if ready to complain again, and I interrupt her, asking in my most fake professional customer service voice if she'd like a plate to carry it on. I added that this is why there was space at the top of the bowl, so it didn't put you at risk of a burn. The amount of chili I added was negligible, but she certainly got her full bowl. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and post some bear emojis in the comments.